we here in Albstadt to add the new Cannondale FSI, the brand's top-end carbon cross-country hardtail. We've just spent the day riding the World Cup course, and we thought we'd try and be really edgy and cool and film our piece to camera next to the course, but it was far too wet, rainy and cold to possibly ever do that. So we've gone back to our hotel room in much more favourable climbs, and I'm here to tell you about what's new on the bike. The FSI was first introduced back in 2014, and at the time that was a pretty wacky bike. And there's no different with the new FSI. Now there's a lot to talk about on the bike, but we're going to start in the obvious place with the new Lefty Ocho. The Ocho is the eighth generation of the Lefty and its XC guys. And the biggest talking point is, of course, the move from a dual crown design to a single crown design now. Candale claims that one of its primary goals in designing the fork in this way was, as you would imagine, reducing weight. And Cannondale claims that depending on which model of the fork you go for, the Ocho drops 250 grams off of the previous Lefty 2.0 version of the fork. To give you context, the fork comes in a touch heavier than a Stepcast 32 fork, but a little bit lighter than a Sid. Weight isn't the only story here with the Ocho. The Lefty has always been famed as a very, very stiff fork. But what's quite interesting with the new fork as Cannondale claims it's reduced the torsional stiffness, so that's kind of twisting stiffness, of the new fork by 14%. In the world of cross country where stiffness is kind of triumphed over all else, it's a really interesting move to see them considering how tracking could be improved by reducing stiffness. Another thing to note about the new Lefty is it's moved to a regular tapered steerer, so you're not going to have to deal with any proprietary nonsense as with the old fork. This means you could fit any regular fork to the FSI frame set, and indeed, the cheapest frames come with a regular fork, but it also means that Lefty can be fitted to pretty much any modern frame out there. Lefties have always been famed for being very, very smooth forks, and this is in part due to the fact that their internals run on roller needle bearings. Now, this has actually been improved for the new version of the fork, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that now. The best thing to do is to check out my full write-up with a link in the description below. But on that note, Cannondale claims that the new Ocho has 140% less static friction than a Sid or a Fox 32. Cannondale claims that this makes it the smoothest fork in history, which is a bold claim, but one we'll take with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Many will also be delighted to hear that Cannondale has dropped the hydraulic lockout remote in favor of a regular mechanical cable actuated remote. The hydraulic one could work very well, but it was notoriously faffy to service and this is a move we're personally very happy to see. Owners of the old fork will be aware that it can be quite faff and a bit awkward to remove a wheel quickly. The new Lefty has a funky little quick release arrangement which basically works by holding down a button and turning a 5mm Allen key 180 degrees which allows you to remove the whole caliper in a one -er. There's loads more to talk about with the new fork, but we don't have time to do it here because we've got an impeding embargo. So if you want to learn more, check that link in the description below. Of course, attached to the fork, there's a whole new bike. And the FSI platform itself has seen a host of new changes. The primary goal when redesigning the FSI was to make a bike that was faster up, faster down, and faster everywhere. All of which added up to a bike which was claimed to be 40 seconds faster around the Stellenbosch World Cup course, which is a bold claim, and I'll leave it at that. As you expect of a new XC bike, all the usual stuff is there. It's lighter than the previous model, it's stiffer than the previous model, and it's claimed to be more comfortable as well. The bike still features Cannondale's AI integration, which sees the whole drivetrain moved off 6mm to the right, and to counteract this, the wheel is dished off to the left. This improves tire clearances and also means you're still able to run a front derailleur on the bike. You also get a super short rear end, and the bike has 427 mil long chainstays throughout the range. In a bid to improve comfort, Candale's got rid of the regular seat post clamp and it's now using a wedge style binder. This allows more of the seat post to be showing from the frame, which improves deflection. They've also done this really cool thing with the through axle on the rear. And on the non-drive side, where you normally have the head of the through axle sitting, there's actually a slot cut out into the bottom facing down from the bike. What this allows you to do is as you undo the through axle, there's a slightly smaller section halfway across it. And as you pull that out, it allows the whole wheel to drop out once it's disengaged from the threads on the drive side. 
This means wheel changers are going to be quicker than ever before with the new FSI. As with the old FSI, and to be fair all of Cannondale's XC bikes, the geometry is pretty rad for the world of XC. So the bike has a 69 degree head angle up front, which is matched with a 55mm offset fork. And that slightly longer offset is said to make the handling just a little bit more nimble to counteract that slightly slacker head tube. All of this adds up to a bike which, in theory, will descend very, very well while still having, you know, really good handling in tight, twisty single track. Last little spec point before we get to how it actually rides. All of the bikes throughout the range will come spec with 760mm wide bars. As I've said before, you can always make a wider bar narrower, but you cannot make a narrow bar wider, so don't bother leaving any stupid comments. So I'm sure you're very keen to hear how the bike rides. I've been here riding in Almstadt around the World Cup course with my beautiful colleague behind the camera, Joe Norledge, a very seasoned and experienced XC racer himself. And it's been a hoot. <laughs> to say the least, the conditions have been challenging. It's incredibly wet out there and I am so glad I am not an XC pro because I would not like to be racing in those conditions. We started with a climb through the bottom of the valley up to the top of the course, which if you've ever watched the racing, does not actually look that steep, but I can assure you it is very steep, very hard to put any kind of power down. Joe and I were riding the top spec World Cup edition of the bike, which weighs 8.4 kilos in that build. This match, the super stiff frame, meant the only thing that was gonna let anyone down in the climbs was my middling power. But even out of the saddle, the bike felt superb. And when you lock out that lefty fork, it feels more like a road bike than anything else. It's a properly, properly firm lockout, and it was very, very impressive. And even riding in those muddy conditions, we didn't have any issues with that cable lockout. So I can't say I missed the hydraulic lockout one bit. After those climbs, we almost immediately hit some very, very steep rough terrain with a few awkward drops. And the stiffness of the lefty fork was immediately apparent. It is a very, very stiff chassis and the bike feels very accurate in this sort of terrain. With that said, that accuracy was quite considerably diminished with the lacklustre choice of tyres for the day. The bike rolls on these new Summer XC tyres from Schwalbe. I'm sure these are great tyres for dry, fast conditions, but they are not what I would have chosen for riding around the course today. And that super slick, kind of sticky mud was sitting on top of a more hard-packed layer, and any accuracy from the fork was immediately lost with the tyre washing up beneath us. With that said, I didn't crash. Take of that what you will, but I do really think it is a properly confident XC bike. In steep terrain, it doesn't feel nearly as noodly. You don't feel like you're gonna pitch over the front of the bar so much. And it is a good, good shape for this more technical terrain. It's a shame our first go on the FSI was slightly compromised by the conditions. It's a bike which is designed to be ridden really fast and hard, not awkwardly tripoded around corners like Joe and I did a lot in the day. But when we did have a few chances to gas up a few climbs and smash at some descents, the bike began to make much more sense. But it's a bike which is designed for World Cup XC racing, so that's what we would expect and hope of it. One of the claimed advantages of the lefty is that super, super supple action. When we were doing some short seated climbs, it is amazing how active the fork is over small bumps. In practice, this would translate, I suspect, to a much more comfortable ride in things like marathon races or long fire road climbs, where you want to reduce fatigue to the maximum possible. The only niggle we had with the new FSI, though truthfully, this is more of an issue for Joe, who has much narrower hips than most, is that all of the bikes in the range now come with Eagle crank sets with unusually high Q factors. Cannondale has to spec its bikes with AI integration with slightly wider cranks to make up for that slightly wider rear end with the 6mm offset with the drivetrain. And the only way to narrow down this Q factor is by using Cannondale's own hologram cranks. This is a very small point, and for most it probably won't be an issue, but it's definitely something worth considering. Overall, we've had a pretty short amount of time on the FSI. Admittedly, on a pretty amazing course, and it was so much fun getting to blast around the World Cup course and make an absolute fool of ourselves in comparison to how fast the pros would be going around. But the FSI certainly didn't disappoint. 
Like I said, the build, the spec, wasn't perfect for the day. The tires were a slightly ropey choice. And we wanted to spend a little bit more time getting to know the bike and making it our own. But I have a feeling for those looking for a super fast, super light, cross-country hardtail, the new FSI is very unlikely to disappoint. <laughs>